All right. Hello, everyone. Johnny here. Uh, had a really great question come in from uh, one of the folks that was on the channel, Huang Van Nyo. Uh, he said he was struggling with risk management and passing a challenge and asks me, how do you pass and tackle a challenge? So I wanted to talk through this because I think there's a lot of people who are struggling with this topic. And I remember me struggling with this as well. So uh, sit back and uh, let's go deep down this hole and figure out why you're struggling. And if you, I promise you, if you listen to these next few slides, you're going to learn a lot about yourself and why you're having these thoughts. So let's go ahead and begin. So, um, all right, so we're going to go over here. So today's lesson is going to be a uh, third lesson in 2024. I have another lesson set that I started in 2023. We'll refer to that in a moment, but today's going to be on the topic of struggling with risk management and passing prop firm challenges. Here's what you do. First things first, we want to think about it from the core. What is the foundational thing that you must fix in order to do this? So it's going to be really important that you listen and stay focused. Put your phone down. I promise you this will be very important for you and very substantial. So pay attention if you truly want to become a good trader. So six core pillars. I thought about this for quite some time and I really try to dial it down to six core pillars. So there's core market understanding. You need to have a good understanding of the market. You need to understand what your laws are regarding risk management. You need to understand core technical analysis. You have to understand being able to execute on that analysis and having the experience to do so. And then you need to be able to master your personal psychological factors that impact you. And lastly, we need to address continuous learning. So. These six, very important here. Make sure you pause and and appreciate these as we go through each and every one of them, okay? So the first one, what does market understanding mean? So simply put, you need to know what's happening in the market. You need to care what is going on. What is the Fed doing in the United States? What, or if you trade Forex, you know, you need to be paying attention to the country's and what's happening when you trade Forex. So when we see an economic calendar, we see something like Forex factory, right? You can see it every single week. We refer to this. We look at the current week and we see what's happening in the coming week, next week, following week. We look at it all. So you need to understand that. That's probably pretty simple for many of you. You, you probably understand that, but you need to really really dive deep into that and understand what's happening when, because from a time factor, that's going to greatly impact you, particularly if you're a futures trader like myself, it really greatly impacts and tells you when there's going to be the highest amount of volatility. So um, you need to also pay attention to seasonal historic tendencies and what happens during certain months and where does it have a tendency to occur. Uh, ICT goes through this lesson and he goes through it a couple of times on his calendar, on his channel. So I'm not going to teach this to you, but this is something you can easily look up for the commodities industry and for equities as well. The third and probably most important thing that you need to understand is what is a premium and a discount, right? So in order for us to understand this, we need to take a look at a chart. So we can take a look at this. Let's take a look at a four hour chart right now. If you were to take a look at this chart and only this chart, which is essentially the month of April, one month's data, would you be able to tell me what is a premium and what is a discount? If you can't do that, 
then there's some work you need to do to be able to study and identify what is a premium and what is a discount. So that is something that you need to be able to understand yourself. Uh, that is not something that can be taught easily, but it is something that can be learned. So if we take this whole range, for example, we can kind of like take wherever the midpoint would be. So roughly 18,537, right? Eighteen five thirty three fifty seven or something like that. So there you go. So you have this lower half is technically a discount. You're gonna see buys really do well in a discount. And then you see up here, this is a premium. You're gonna see sales typically do better in a premium. So simple concepts like that you need to have under your belt like perfectly so that you can think about them without having to think about them consciously. So ICT goes over all of that as well. Uh, there's plenty of lessons that he goes through. And um, what you can do is you could go to Inner Circle Trader. You can look at the Join the ICT Mentorship for free. He'll walk you through exactly which playlists to go through across all of these playlists here, he'll tell you that you should probably go through the ENDS series, and then you should probably touch upon ICT Market Maker series, right? Market Maker Primer course, things of that nature. That's what's going to get you the input that you need in order to really understand what is a premium and what is a discount. Because if you can't understand that, you'll never know what institutions are, how institutions are looking at this market, right? So I gave you an idea of where to look, where to start. If you're not an ICT trader, that's totally fine. You don't have to listen to ICT, but you do need to find somebody who can teach you about how institutions are looking at the markets. Otherwise, you're going to be left not knowing what's going to happen, right? So... I think that that's something that you can definitely continue to work on. And it's really important for you to capture just these four alone are going to greatly, these three alone, sorry, the mentorship itself is a whole nother grab bag, but these three alone will greatly help you get into the right motion as to what's supposed to be happening and when. Um, there are nuances. I'm not saying this is a silver bullet, but there are nuances to this, and each election year, in particular, like 2024 is, is going to be a little bit different. But generally, these will treat you the right way. So make sure you invest time with ICT if you're going to learn from ICT. Otherwise, make sure you're ready to invest hours looking at and understanding premium and discount. Um, so what we go to next is risk management. My first question here is what's your strategy when you take your first full stop out, your full drawdown? Do you have a strategy? You know, that's a question that I had to ask myself many times before I finally sat down, wrote it down and said, hey, what's my strategy, right? So over on my channel, if you go into this playlist side, I have new futures traders, how to playlist 2023. I have a specifically funded account risk management video. I go through the numbers, I go through examples. So make sure you watch that and study that because I also give a really nice tool and access to that tool in the contents of that video. So um, study that, go watch ICT's risk management videos and Make sure that you have a strategy for handling drawdown so that you don't have that bad of a drawdown curve, right? You don't want your trading to look like this. You don't want your evaluation account to be looking like this. You're going to blow it if that's the case. But the second core thing you need to really be thinking about is do I have a strategy and how disciplined am I at sticking to that strategy? Oftentimes, myself included, in the past, I have 
gotten to the point where you see red, maybe you're trading green for a few days, then you see some red and you're like, oh crap, let me try and make this back as quickly as I can. That is going to lead to blown accounts. It's going to lead to poor drawdown management and you're not gonna be able to get out of drawdown within good trading parameters. Remember, we are in this game to win and to survive. You don't want us getting this. If you're going to get in it to scalp and YOLO, fine. Do you. You won't be in this game very long. But for everyone else who's trying to be a serious trader, you need to see how disciplined you are at keeping to your risk rules. So this is something that, again, I have a video on. ICT's got many videos on. Make sure you study those and go deep in this area and make sure you write down what your risk management strategy is because it's going to be important that you write that down. I can't emphasize how important it is that you write it down somewhere. Type it into your Discord. Write it down on a piece of paper and slap it on top of your monitor. Put it on your dry erase board that's next to your wall. Doesn't matter. Just write it down so that you remember to do that every single time you hit take a full drawdown. There are strategies that you can use. I use ICT strategies, but whatever it is, just stay disciplined to it and make sure that it's lowering your drawdown curve. That's key. This next area, of course, the technical analysis. As you all might know, I'm an inner circle trader, trader, ICT student. Does that mean you have to trade ICT? No, but... You know, you can trade you can trade using your favorite EMA SMA crossovers. You can trade using your Ishimoku clouds, using your moving averages, you can trade using um the strat, you know, you can trade using uh, gosh, what else is out there? Um um Bollinger bands, you can use those, you can use only dynamic lines, you know, uh whatever works for you that's fine, but you need to make sure that you spend time with it. Um, you need to spend time with it so that you can end up playing with that over time, looking how it's, per how it's actually, uh, how, how, how it's performed over the previous few months and years. And so that you can build a systematic way of thought and thinking about how that those patterns, how this these technicals look and, and feel and behave. So when you look at price action, it shouldn't be you guessing which way it's going to go. It should be, hey, I have a strong bias towards this area where I think it's going to go now or what's going to happen next. You build this up over time. You build this up over experience. There's really nothing more you can do but spend time in the markets, right? Um but by doing so, you're going to have a much better understanding of why a concept works. You're going to learn stuff if you study ICT. And this is for everybody that wants to study ICT. If you don't study ICT, whatever, you can skip to the next like few seconds. But um, for those of you who are really under trying to understand why a concept works, why does a breakout pattern work? Why does a breakout pattern not work? What happened? Where were we? in the discounter premium when we saw that pattern. Why might it not work? What's the underlying happening behind the scenes? Where are institutions looking for things in a premium to sell into and, and a discount to buy into? So these are all concepts that you learn as you go through the theory, as you study multiple times. You know, you can't watch one of these videos and be done with it because you're gonna come back to these videos and learn something that you missed. Uh, you know, these videos might be one hour, two hour, three hours long too. So, so either be focused the whole time and take arduous amounts of notes or come back, make sure you're watching things, digesting them, looking for evidence, and then coming back to it. So you need to upskill your technical chops. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to recognize things quickly enough for you to take action on it. And that takes us to the fifth moment here you need a good execution skill set so when i ask you this and this is really important here what is your model right 
Can you explain it to me succinctly? Can you explain it to me simply? What is your model? I can give you a model right here. Something simple is go look for a weekly draw on liquidity. Go look at your economic calendar that day and the week. Wait for some opposing price delivery to happen and look for a displacement towards the direction of your draw on liquidity. Find a fair value gap in that displacement and then ride that down in a particular, like whether it's in one of the London sessions or New York sessions or afternoon sessions, make sure you find whenever that model happens, you target this exactly. If, if it checks off every single one of those, boom, you have your model and that's all you're looking for. So can you write out the specific steps in each model? And is it simple? Have you dialed it down to the simplest of things so that you can understand it, you can go back, look for it, and you can go see how many times it played out, how many times it didn't play out. And if it's above 70% of the time, you're gonna be a winning trader with the proper risk management tools. So I go back to this because this is so incredibly important here. What is your model? You need to be able to write down your model on a piece of paper in front of you so that you can say, hey, I have been written it down. It's real. It's a real set of steps that I need to go then back test over the course of years, two years, three years worth of data. That's right. You need to go back test your models. Otherwise, your brain won't recognize that they work or they don't work, right? So that's the fifth item there. And then, of course, maybe maybe one of the more important ones is personal psychology. I don't mean trading psychology with uh, what's happening on the charts themselves and, you know, who do we think, where are the buyers thinking they're going to take it? Who's thinking it's going to go long? Who's thinking there's buy pressure? Who's thinking there's sell pressure? I don't mean that trading psychology. What I mean is you personally. What are your emotions doing? Are you staying disciplined to your rules? And how repetitive and, of course, how consistent are you now being over time? So those three things are really, really important because you, with consistency, you eliminate emotions. With discipline, you also eliminate uh, you eliminate digressing from discipline, digressing from your plan, essentially, right? So those are really extremely important. If you can't hone and harness your personal psychology, if there, if you've got stuff going on in your life right now, and you know you've got school stressing you out, maybe you've got like you know a wife or husband stressing you out, maybe you've got um, parents, you know somebody in the family, some friends always asking you to go out drinking on on like a Thursday night. Friday night, whatever, right? The people who are going to win in this industry are the ones who are studying every single night. They're studying on the weekends. They're really being so immersed in this that it's like it's a second language to you. Have you ever, have you ever like met people who know two, three, four different languages? Oftentimes, those people went over to immerse in that country's language. And that's how they learned quickly. It's a similar approach, whether you're married with children, with a job, I'm trading with a full-time job right now. If I'm able to do it with a full-time job, then chances are you're going to be able to do it too, right? So it just takes time and discipline. With these prop firms, okay, it's really important that you're respecting the risk when you have true money involved. And technically, every single dollar you spend on these is true money involved. It may not feel like that at first because it's play money, it's demo accounts technically on the evaluation accounts. But what's kind of key is that you treat it respectfully because if you can do that, then you can see that it's very, very, very easy and simple over the course of time to pass these accounts. 
So I have videos all about this, right? So if you end up going to my channel, remember I have that playlist, right? So remember I have this playlist here. You can go to this new futures trader how to playlist and I've got the 2024 lessons, which this lesson will be a part of. You need to watch these videos, how to pass an evaluation account and strategy. And you need to watch funded account risk management as well. You can watch the 50 and 150K evaluations in one day supplement where I show you examples of me passing it in one day. But you must, I, I repeat, do not try this. If you are strapped for cash, do it the consistent route. Make sure you're trading with demo environment as long as you possibly can. Because what that does, when you trade demo, you don't have any sort of, you have no question, like, you know, when you're trading with a demo account, you have no question that if you take a trade, it's going to, if it goes against you, it's not real money, right? So you want to be able to find those trades and, and, and study and do those, make those, make those trades, push the button, uh, when you're ready to, uh, on a demo account so you can see and prove to yourself, hey, this is winning over time, or hey, this is not quite winning. There's something wrong with what I what I understood. And make sure that you're training on that, right? So so I think that the that first set is gonna be really important for you. And of course, if you go into the 2024 lesson list, there's a great video that I created on how to backtest a trading strategy where I talk through yet another trading strategy, a wonderful scalping trading strategy uh, for those that only want to stick in something for a little bit and get their bag and leave, right? Oftentimes, I'll see traders that want to trade for the full position and they get stopped out or the the position runs against them. Unfortunately, with prop firms, if you let something go unrealized gain too high and you forget to take profit, that will run against your trailing stop loss, right? So a lot of those strategies I implement and I, I talk about during these, especially during the um, how to pass an evaluation account and strategy. I talk through all of that, right? So make sure you watch that video. Uh, I appreciate you if you give this a like as well, if this has been helpful. But um, this is these are some of the core foundations that you have to make sure that you, you study, you practice over time, and you get it to a point where it's basically secondhand, where you don't have to refer to theory anymore. You can see it. You've proven it to yourself over the course of time, over the course of backtesting. Right. So that gets into um, that gets into trading and prop firm psychology now. So in order to pass these, you're going to want to if, if depending on your your experience with trading, if you're already well experienced, you can go with the one day passes. That's fine. If you have a huge bankroll, you can also do that as well. But be careful when you transition over to performance accounts because then you need to really make, be careful you keep those accounts, you know, keep them alive. That's the name of the game, right? But for the evaluations themselves, um, go watch those videos that I mentioned earlier. But also, either treat it like something where you're going to get a 5 or 10 point move and get that bag and be done with it for the day, you know? Get to the point where you're hitting very quick base hits and over the course of time and a few days, you'll easily be able to pass these. Now, you need to be very strict with how you choose your 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 setups and you need to know, are you trading on a uh, four-hour time frame? Are you trading on a 15-minute time frame? Are you trading on a five or four, three, two, one-minute time frame, right? You need to understand what you're looking at and how you're looking at price in order to identify your entries. If you don't get good at that during demo, I would recommend you don't move on to an evaluation account yet. Uh, trade with the demo until you can, as long as you can, until you can prove to yourself, like, hey, I've seen this happen 
hundreds of times in the past. I myself have traded it dozens of times. I've seen it work better than 50% of the time. I'm going to start trading now and looking for that same model. You only need one model that you look for. In fact, it's going to be easier for you if you just focus on one model. Go find the easiest model there is out there for you to understand and and go about go about um backtesting it, finding the exact same situations from a higher time frame chart down to a lower time frame chart. See and look for those same exact situations at those same premium and discount areas. Because what you'll find is that as you look back over time, if there was a premium, you're going to find that some of the shorts might have played better. Or if you're in an extreme discount, some of the longs might play better. So these are all things you need to consider when you're thinking about how do I pass a prop firm. These evaluations, oftentimes they have trailing drawdowns. That means that as long as your max unrealized profit goes up, so does that trail. But the moment that the moment that your your max unrealized gain starts to drop and it starts to sell off, your trail doesn't move back down. So eventually, boom, you're you're out, right? So so for two different approaches, first, if you have a large enough bankroll to buy accounts, wait for the sales. Apex Trader Funding does have a lot of sales and oftentimes you can find some pretty good ones, 70%, 80%, very rarely 90%, but um, you can get started pretty good off of an 80% off sale. Um, I think the 50K accounts cost 30 bucks maybe, and that might be a lot depending on what country you're trading from. But um, in the US, you know, 30 bucks is maybe two dinners, right? So if you make enough to to pay for that, then great, you can pay for that each month. It's kind of treated like it's a Wi-Fi subscription, right? So um, I think that that is something that you need to make sure that you're managing your bankroll well, because with enough failed accounts, that can add up really quickly, especially if you're buying them consecutively, right? And, and then blowing them that the same day. So I want you to really think about the six pillars that I mentioned um, during this call and during this lesson. Um, I, wa I want you to think about, this is the last one here, is how often are you learning? Are you constantly going back and studying? How often are you revisiting a concept, right? How often are you have you back tested a strategy? Uh, do you even know how to back test? I gave you a video of mine. You can go refer to that, right? And how are you adapting over time? And do you understand? And have you really, really, like, like have you really, really understand that last bullet here? Like that it's gonna take time and experience, because if you do that and combine it with this last, this last uh item here at the end of the day the people that want it like really truly want it i'm not saying that hey you saw me make a great trade or you saw ict or somebody else make a really great trade and you want to try to get there because it makes more money than you make in a whole day so for some people some of the people that watch me that has happened right um but you need to want this so badly. You need to want that change so badly that you're going to invest time in your evenings studying. You're going to invest time in your weekends studying, back testing, making sure you know those models like back of your head hand, right? You're going to want to make sure that you wake up interested in what's happening in the markets and ready to learn. When you can engineer that level of excitement, then you're going to naturally learn everything. Back to continuous learning. You're going to naturally learn everything a lot faster. And using ICT's guidance, if you can come back, I come back to concepts all the time. I go back to um, price action models to study them. I go back to 2022, 2023 model. Like, gosh, I, I haven't even gone back to 2023 model in a while. And there's a lot of stuff in there I still have yet to incorporate into my game. But I'm okay with it. I don't need very much of that 
right now. I have plenty in the 2022 model and 2016, 2017 mentorship already. So I think that at the end of the day, you need to ask yourself, how badly do you want this? And then from an uh, evaluation account perspective, stop trading evaluation accounts until you've gone back to demo and traded demo like you would trade an account real in real real life. So if if I'm using micros, you should be using micros as well and looking for those big runs. Um, or you can trade with the minis themselves. But the problem is you're risking like eight percent on any one mini and ten handle, twelve handle drawdown. That's a lot of an account. Like right. So so and I talk about that during one of the videos there too risk management and uh, the trailing drawdown too. With these 50, with these accounts that you buy, like let's use Apex because I know Apex, I trade Apex, trader funding. Um, with these accounts, they, okay, so let me bring this up here for you. This is something that um, I wish somebody had taught me. So for instance, if you go to AT, Apex trader funding, uh, and actually on my, YouTube channel itself. Um, you'll get this link here. We'll give you the 80% off. I think that's going on right now until the end of April. So, uh, yep. So this will give you, um, I think they put the code on the actual thing here. So this code here, D B V I B O H K. You can write that down. That'll get you 80% off of these, uh, 167 for the 50 K, right? So it looks like it looks like you can hit, get even lower accounts too, but don't buy any more than one account. You can play, you can make a whole bunch of different demo accounts. It's not just one sim account slash sim slash demo. It's the same verbiage, but you can make use of this eighty percent off and get a demo account along with the evaluation account itself. Who cares if it lapses a month or two? I mean, you're paying more than that for internet probably or for Netflix. I mean, God forbid you you watch Netflix and you're paying like half of uh, what this account would cost on a sale, right? So think about what your priorities are, right? I would start to think like, like if you're using a 50K account, you don't actually have 50K account in terms of what you're risking. You're actually risking this 2.5 grand. This is all you can afford to fail, right? And Let's do some math here. Let's say you use one mini on ES. One mini times four ticks per point times $12.5 per, per tick and then times, um, gosh, five handles. So if ES, if you trade one mini and you lose full stop, five handles, drawdown, you're already down $250 on your 2,500 trailing threshold. So you have to divide that. What does that get you? 10% risked. Does that math make sense? I don't think so, right? So this is why you need to then go to my chat, go to my video here. Make sure you go watch the risk management video because I end up giving you a tool um, if you look at this, um, I actually give you a tool down here where you can go and download it for free. Like you don't have to do anything. You, I mean, it's not a perfect tool, but it's 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 good enough where you can basically tell it which uh, tick amount that you want to put in, what basically what what instrument you want to trade, and it's going to calculate what your drawdown should be. So. Um, again, I think they run this trade, they run this sale until the end of April. And then I don't know what's going to happen with that sale, but, um, but yeah, I mean, if you've made it this far, congratulations, you've done a phenomenal job. There's a lot of stuff to review. I mean, let me go back to the beginning here. So remember these core pillars, you're going to need to bolster this over time. And the easiest way to do this is through demo trading through trading without the fear of this costing you monetary harm the longer you can stay in that bracket 
of demo trading and really, really trading and understanding how your model behaves and trading that over time, the better you're going to get, the more confidence you will gain in your model. And at some point, only you know when that is, at some point you will say, hey, this is boring. I've seen this happen enough times and I'm ready for this to go. So um, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was insightful. Um, let me know in the comments if you made it this far. Let me know in the comments. I appreciate the likes and if you subscribe, thank you. Um, but I appreciate the likes as well if you if this was valuable. Um, or if not, in the comments, you know, let me know. Let me know if it's not valuable. Let me know, you know, if it's too too much, you know, I totally understand and I, I understand how you can feel that way. But take it from me. I've spent the past year and a half now going hard on ICT concepts and they work. I I can't, it takes time. I mean, I've had my lucky spurts, yes, but I've also had the opposites of those, which really forced me to think back and analyze what I was doing and, and really like I, I hit those points when I was thinking, man, is trading for me? Like when you blow enough performance accounts because you're trading them before you're ready, it, you blow enough of them and it really, really hurts. I mean, psychologically, it is devastating. And I was fortunate enough to have the bankroll, uh, meaning like my job is paying enough to be able to help support that um, early on. Man, just thinking about it just doesn't bring back great memories. Um, but if you can plow through, going back to this last point, how badly do you want it? If you can plow through that, you're going to make it. It just takes time. So um, thank you very much. Um, uh, another shout out to Huang Van No uh, for the idea for this video. I think this has been a video long in the makings. It is more psychological in nature. Um, but if you jot down those core areas, I gave you a lot of really key gap areas to mend. And, and they call them leaks. In the poker community, I play Texas Hold'em uh, in Vegas sometimes, but um, those are called leaks in your game. You want to plug those holes, right? So these are key areas that if you plug most of these, you're going to be on the way to becoming more of a consistent trader. So thank you very much. Appreciate your time. And uh, thank you so much. And we'll see you on the next live, hopefully, or Sunday prep for the week. Uh, again, I'm live on Wednesdays and Fridays, typically. Uh, I, I tried doing it every day. It became very, very stressful. I was not trading well, and I'm not quite there yet. But maybe in the future, I'll go back to daily trading when I, uh, when I can trade full-time. But right now, I still have a full 9-to-5 job. I can't do that. So uh, anyways, thank you so much for listening, and I hope to see you on the next one. Appreciate a like and subscribe if you can, and we'll talk soon. Take care.